the people that you were with, you know, and they would take pictures, you know, post pictures or something, you know, try to sabotage you. And somebody would look at her. She ain't saying, you know, she ain't right with God. They would do it. And I was in a rage and it was like, man, I don't care. Because I saw it. I saw it. And I remember a couple times, you know, a couple of people come to me trying to be sweet and I be cussing their face. Their face. And I know why they go. I was on the record before, as you can. Nobody knew me. But I shut it down. How would they feel? What would they think about that? How would they feel if somebody told you that? Your pastor is a guy that just, you know, they folks just dog you or talk about you. I want y'all to think about it for a second. How would you feel? Yeah, you know, you know they probably gonna say pastor, who they gonna say that to? I don't even want to kill no time on you now. Oh my, nah, Pastor Lee, ooh. Pastor Lee was talking, she was talking about her. Yeah, she said she this and such, and she said she, ah, no, 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 how would you feel though? Somebody tell me, let's see what you how would you feel? I was devastated. Knowing that God had purposed you to do what you do. Mm-hmm. And I am leaning towards you mm-hmm. to prosper me and mature me. Mm-hmm. And if I hear you talking about me, dogging me out, then they're gonna be confusing. Yeah. It's yeah. gonna make me feel really some type of way. Yeah. I will become bitter at preachers. Not church preachers no more. You know? All of that. It's damaging. It's not my forte. It's not my forte. It's not. It's not my forte. If I say anything, it's not to degrade you at all. It's not to degrade you. I even know how to get around the truth when they come to me with the truth about stuff. I know how to get around it. So if they say, you know, such and such was caught stealing, I didn't go around it. And if they come to me with it, okay, well, they don't want to be there, I know. But they don't want to be there. You know what my rebuttal going to be? God is a forgiving God. I want to give you all that wisdom. Did you find out what the situation was? Did you find out why they were sinning? You know, maybe they were hungry or something. And then they'll come back and say, well, why didn't they just come and ask for something? Well, you do know that people have this thing called pride where they're ashamed to come and ask for stuff. Then I'm just going to keep rewarding you until I can make you a champion. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear what I said. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep rebuttal it until I can make you a champion. Because it had to be a reason as to why it was done. See? It had to be a reason. You know what I'm saying? It had to be a reason. So I, I did not one time deny the fact that they stole the gross out of it. 
Not one time. And not one time did I degrade him. Just kept coming back. Until we got until I got him to a champion state. That's love. That's love. That's what love will do. I keep calling you a champion and a woman. And you excel in all that you put your mind to. That's what I decree over y'all. Mm -hmm. That's it. I want to see y'all win. And I want you to make sure you stay in covenant with your spouse. Don't let nothing move you from your place. It don't matter. You come with some dirty hands. I got some sanitizer. That's free. We'll clean it up, man. We'll clean it up. Anybody got anything you want to say? I, I just want to say that um, Ephesians 14 really stood out for me and it, it, it kind of like put some pressure on meaning it never was broken down like that before I never heard of but like like that before and the five signs of losing hey dude it's sad to say but you know we're vulnerable to one of them five mm -hmm. and in order to overcome you know losing we have to you know, dip it in the book. Mm -hmm. We got to take care of them, care of them. And they really stood out and and I'm working. I'm working progress. Keep but working. I refuse to go over there. Keep working, Lord. Keep working. Keep working. You're an evangelist. And you're gonna and you're gonna do just that. God told me years ago you were an evangelist and you were in communicant, man. Spirit of the Lord was talking to me about you when you were in community. And my prayers and all was a part of the pool to get you home. To get you home. Because the assignment of the enemy was to destroy you there. And to bring you home. So help me God. I pray for you while you were coming home. Oh, God, I know, I know what I'm supposed to do. And I know. The Lord showed me you. You were crying. Keep going. I heard a word this morning and made me think. 
think about you day in, about the week, about the space. I was listening to Bishop Gloria Jones this morning. I was unctioned by the Lord to listen to him. And it was on one passage, one thing he said that God wanted me to hear. And when I heard it, I could turn it off. He said, I was flying, and we were going smooth, everything was good. Then all of a sudden, he said, the plane started going in turbulence, you know what I'm saying? He said, first response was to look out the window. He said, look out the window. You could see all them clouds, dark clouds and everything. It was like, oh, that's the reason why. He said, the pilot spoke over the intercom and said, everybody remain calm. We're on autopilot now. And he said, what that signified was, was as long as everything was clear, the pilot could handle the plane. But when it got in a turbulent place, he had to release his hands from it, put it in autopilot with a man to the care. Right. He said, we never stopped flying. We never stopped flying. They didn't say, turn around and go back. They didn't even say, make an emergency landing. They just said, let it go. That the auto pilot take control of us. Got it. Got it. I know my big boy. I know my assignment. I know. Prophetic intercessor. Think of it. To prophetically decree and say. To make sure the atmospheres host a prophetic aroma. When you walk in, the prophetic walks in. It opens the door for the prophetic to be able to minister, for it to be able to come in and speak. When you go in, Wherever you go, I don't care. If it's just someone's house, we brought a prophetic word, a prophetic opportunity to that house. That house now has the opportunity to have a future. So you don't have to be caught up in what world. You don't have to live over there. Be afraid of over there. You bring a future, you know? You bring a hope. If you would just pull out of that, you will see so much change for you and around you. I'm to be able this for him. Be prophetic. Be prophetic. Be prophetic. Be prophetic. Be prophetic. It's who you are. It's who you are. Be prophetic. I know my people. I know my assignment. Fighting for you all. I'm fighting. I'm fighting for you all. I'm fighting for who you are purpose to be. I don't care about who you were. I'm fighting for who you are purpose to be. I don't care what you do.